Well, good evening, everybody. A very warm welcome in these very strange times to St. John's for our very socially distanced carol service. As if any of us needed reminding, please do observe very rigorously all the precautions that have been advised in terms of social distancing and hand sanitizing and so forth. Service will commence in a few moments, so I just want to mention a few things to hopefully, uh, to hopefully help it to run smoothly. Um, you should all have a copy of this order of service. I'm sure you do. And the service is going to proceed without any announcements of the hymns, carols, or readings. Needless to say, sadly, we are not allowed to sing, but the choir will be singing, and they will be singing a mixture of congregational hymns and carols, uh, as well as um, choir pieces. So there will be a sense in which we can empathize with what's being, uh, what, with what we're hearing. We're going to stand until the end of the bidding prayer, following the processional hymn. Then I would invite you to sit or kneel for the Lord's Prayer. And please remain seated for all the readings and for all the music except that we will all stand for the final reading, the ninth reading from St. John's Gospel. Now, there won't be any candles tonight, but it's still possible you might need to know where the fire exits are. They're at the far right and left of the west end of the church and through that open door into the resource room. And they are all open. So there's a nice through draft, and I'm sorry it's a bit cold, but we do have the heating on. So there's no candles, but you will find glow sticks in your pew. And we're going to activate those and hold them up for the reading of the gospel. So please try and resist the temptation if it's not already too late uh, to activate those. We do hope that you're going to enjoy this service and that something of the spirit of Christmas will come through even in these very strange pandemic times. As you leave, there'll be the opportunity to make a donation towards the work of the church, either in cash if you'd like to chuck something into uh, a box there, or there's a contactless machine as well. Please do give generously. All charities have been hit hard uh, by the pandemic, and uh, the church is no exception. Finally, we're going to hear references tonight in the readings and in the hymns and carols to Bethlehem and to other historic places in the Holy Land, a deeply troubled region even today. So I invite you as we wait for the service to begin to spend a few moments in a prayerful silence to remember all the peoples and the religious communities of the Holy Land, to remember them before God, and to pray for God's peace for all people the world over. Thank you.
Beloved in Christ, it is this Christmas tide our joy and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the baby lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first day of our disobedience to the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and fellowship within the church he came to build, and especially in our community of Red Hill and Diocese of Southwark. And because this, of all things, would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of Angels bring us all. Amen. The first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 14. The story of Adam and Eve tells of human disobedience and of God's promise of salvation. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is taken from Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18. Abraham has been faithful to God, who promises that the whole human race will be blessed through his descendants. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, said the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to... This is not the second reading, this is the third reading, I apologise. The third reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6 and 7. Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, 
and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God. <coughs>
The fourth reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. The peace that Christ will bring is foreshown. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, nor decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the wean child shall put its hand upon the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God.
The fifth reading is taken from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. The angel Gabriel announces to Mary that she will become the mother of Jesus. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. <laughs> then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. The sixth reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, 
verses 1 to 7. The birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that the whole world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Thanks be to God.
The seventh reading is taken from Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. An angel tells the shepherds of the birth of the Messiah. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. Thanks be to God. The eighth reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The Magi are led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, 
after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and diligently search for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts, of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God.
The ninth reading is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Lord of all, we give you thanks because in choosing the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your son, you have exalted the humble and meek. Your angel hailed her as most highly favored. With all generations we call her blessed, and with her we rejoice and magnify your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>